Hello and welcome to another uh, segment of the Middle States uh, Subcommittee Reports for QAC-TV. My name is Brad Engel and I am doing a series of interviews with subcommittee chairs on the Middle States accreditation process for the Queen Anne's County Public School System. I'm here today with Annie Annika Berry, uh, who is with the Queen Anne's County Public School System and has been for a while now. Annie, tell us about your role with the school system. My role as the design and construction program manager, I'm responsible for all the capital improvement programs that the um, school system does in terms of uh, facility improvement. Mm -hmm. So I take care of the um, new schools and the renovations and the hiring of architects and the contractors. Mm -hmm. So as I vendors, I take care of that. Mm -hmm. So I was shocked to find out that you are the subcommittee chair for facilities. How about that, huh? No, I think, I think it's appropriate. <laughs> if, you, if you're going to be in charge of um, uh, uh, facilities, then I think it's appropriate that um, I try to handle that aspect of the committee. Absolutely. It's a very appropriate uh, placement for you to be, in, be the uh, subcommittee chair uh, for the facilities subcommittee. So as you looked at your, your standards for accreditation and you looked, uh, let's go back about a year uh, and last winter when you uh, got involved in the Middle States process and, uh, you know, take us back to the beginning uh, as you organized your committee and formed it. How did, how did, tell us about that process. Um, what was done was um, being assigned and uh, understanding the accreditation that was required and the area of facilities. Um, we assembled a team of people uh, stakeholders and those in the school systems who are familiar with the facility issues. So at that time, um, I read the requirements and what is expected of the team to the committee to perform. And uh, I went ahead and picked up uh, some, select some members mm -hmm. into the committee. Mm -hmm. That's what I did at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And okay, and so how often did you meet? And I mean, was it more formal or informal or? In, initially, it was more informal. Mm -hmm. And I think it got acquainted with what is expected. Mm -hmm. And um, there was some sort of a curiosity in terms of facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we supposed to be doing? And uh, I understand we have to run some indicators yes. and do some surveys and things like that. So uh, get everybody on board and mm -hmm. saying this is what's expected of us to do. Uh, familiarize yourself with facility issues and let's deal with it as as we go along. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about sort of the indicators and the things that you were asked to take a look at and you were asked to do a self-assessment and an evaluation, what were some of those items that you were asked to look at? We were asked to look at, um, in terms of facilities, everybody knows facilities helps school systems mm -hmm. and um, we are more of the support services. Um, we are not dealing with the curriculum, but we support the curriculum aspect. So what we did was uh, to look at facilities, is the facilities adequate mm -hmm. for, for conveying instructions? One, uh, do we provide all the environment that people need? Is the comfort there? Is the accessibility to the school? Um, what are we doing and um, all, what we need to do in facilities to make things comfortable for the people? That's what we were looking at that time, you know. Mm -hmm. We all do all these things to support the philosophy, the vision of the school system, but the facility aspect plays a major role. Mm -hmm. If people are not comfortable in an in, in environment, uh, they will not learn, you know, they will not pay more attention to it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, and you mentioned the surveys. Mm -hmm. So there was a survey that went out to students and parents last spring, yes. and then there was a survey that went out to the staff in, in August. Let's, let's go back to the parent and student survey. Okay. What... Uh, Tell me what you, you learned from that survey. What sort of information did you get from that? It's, um, you know, we do things um, in terms of facilities. We, you, you perform your work, and uh, this was kind of feedback on how where we are doing and mm -hmm. what we're doing. We seem to have an idea what we should be doing, but this, the, the survey gives a feedback on a reaction of what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. And then getting from the student's perspective, getting from the parents and then the staff. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of curious to see some of the schools in terms of those that have new schools, renovation schools, mm -hmm. and those that were scheduled for the, go through uh, renovations, 
what are the feelings of the people, the occupants, mm -hmm. the end users? Mm -hmm. what, what, you know, we, we were very much interested in finding out what the end users feel, feel, how their perception is, and what they feel about what we've been doing. And what did you find out? Um, very interesting. I think uh, it's, it, you know, uh, the students and um, uh, parents were very um, graded this facility is very high, mm -hmm. and um, which kind of expected, you know, after mm -hmm. investing all this money in, in the schools, um, we were very pleased. That was what we expected. Mm -hmm. And the schools that I expect to receive um, not quite high expectations ratings um, would be like Solisville, that because of what we're doing at Solisville, cannot. I was surprised that the, the parents and the Students, even with the conditions they are in now, they are very comfortable with what we're doing, mm -hmm. and and they are satisfied with what they're doing. Although they feel that they need more, we could do more. Right. So when you say that the results were were very high, uh, you're talking about a percentage, um, yes. seventy percent, eighty percent, or yes, some of mm -hmm. them were clicking the ninety percentage. Ninety percent, like very impressive. Rate. So, and that uh, that's not to say that there are, there are area that is not low. I think the area that we uh, kind of surprised to find um, consistently was ranking low was um, the area of um, temperature control. Mm. And this is mainly coming from the staff. Mm -hmm. So they feel that the air condition is low and the heater is not working as good as it should. And um, we have to look in that to find out what's the issue. Maybe is the issue from the system or mm -hmm. is it from temperature control? You know, people have variables on uh, what they like hot and some people like it cold and it's difficult to do that well it is you're not going to make <laughs> I, I mean uh, you're not going to make everybody happy when yes, it comes to yeah. climate you can have 20 people in a room and 10 people are going to be hot and 10 people are going to be cold so exactly right. so that yeah. that's un that's understandable yes. and i think in a school it you know it's so big and you know it's it, yeah i can i can see where that'd be an issue but how, how are you going to control that that's yes. you know you can only you can only do your best but it sounds like you're at least you know willing to take a look at that yes. and uh so that's certainly, you know, that sounds, you know, like the, the results are very supportive of what you do, what you and your staff do, as far as, uh, you know, the facilities and the environment and, and being comfortable. And that's, I like the way you said that, that you want the students and the staff to feel comfortable in their school. And I think, I think that's a, that's a nice way of saying that. And, and uh, that, that's a good message to get out to the schools, that that is, that is a priority of yours. Yes. And, and that really is. That, that's very good. So... Um, it, now, were there, as you, you mentioned the survey data as, as documentation, were, did they ask you to look at any other documentation um, uh, during your self-study as you sort of evaluated yourself? Were there other, you know, things that you needed to look at? No, they, they did not. Uh, but what we did was um, uh, the, the, the team, the committee members, what we looked at um, based on data mm -hmm. is to, again, find out how we're doing. Uh, one of the things that we looked at is that there is um, consensus to do energy management. Mm -hmm. Everybody's not talking about energy. Mm -hmm. So how can we conserve energy and still make people comfortable? Mm -hmm. So the school system have installed a lot of um, um, uh, apparatus or things that's there that can control part of energy management. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we have to make sure that while we're trying to conserve energy, we do not subject people to uncomfortable environment. Mm -hmm. And that's, those are things we are watching and looking at. Yeah, that's a balance, really, balance. you know, that you have, balance, you, you yes. have to draw. I mean, we want to save money. We're all interested in saving yes. money. <laughs> but, you know, we want to, again, we want a comfortable environment. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's important as well. So, so what are you going to do with this information? Well, what we're going to do in this information is that we looked at the um, overall now and seeing that, uh, especially in terms of space, and question whether we provide adequate space for the teachers, adequate space for the students. And we have undergone a lot of um, renovation mm -hmm. now. Solidville Middle School is, we are building a new school for Solidville Middle School. Yes. And we take some of the issues from the survey and the future planning of schools. Mm -hmm. This comes in handy. We have to look at what we're doing and what we need to improve on future planning of schools to very make sure good. that everybody is satisfied. Mm -hmm. So the data and the feedback is very helpful for us mm -hmm. as planners. Mm -hmm. And we use this 
in anything we're doing in the, in the future, we have to make sure then that we, we take into consideration some of this feedback we receive from the people mm -hmm. in planning mm -hmm. and make sure next time we get a survey, we want to hit 100% throughout. I know that's difficult, but... Well, <laughs> right, and, and you never will. That never will happen. But you can work towards that goal. Towards that goal, yes. So, looking back at the at the process, this is my last question. Looking back at the process from the beginning and reflecting on on you know this information, and you know the the visiting team comes uh, in about uh, about six weeks. They'll they'll be here about five weeks, and uh, that's really that's not the end. That's really the beginning, isn't it? Well, what would you say that you 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 learned? in the last year doing this? What, what, some, some things that kind of kind of stood out. Well, the thing that stood out mainly is this is more like a scoring card. Mm -hmm. So it helps you because now you have people who, can, who are coming in independently to look at what we're doing in terms of facilities. Mm -hmm. We are proud of what we've done. I must have to say so. In the last 15 years, this school system have done a whole lot in terms of renovating schools. Mm -hmm. Almost all our schools have gone through renovations. Mm -hmm. And even the last school remaining, Solisville Middle School, they'll be moving to a new school. Sure. So when you, when you invest that kind of money, millions of dollars, mm -hmm. you, you know, upbringing your school, modernizing them, so it's, it's good to have other people from outside look at it and, and, and see what we'll be doing. The, 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 the fruit of the hard work, you know, just shows up. Mm -hmm. So that's what we learn. And then in future, when we do a new school or something, we take all these things into consideration. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, I mean, that sounds very encouraging, and I think this is, uh, you know, I know that I've, I've been in the, in the system for a long time, and I know every school I visit, I, it, you know, it's, it's, it's really it's a wonderful experience going into these buildings because I know that, that you and, and, and your staff put a lot of time and, and effort into this thing. So congratulations on a job well done. I want to thank uh, Andy for his time today, and uh, best of luck to you. Thank you Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Hello everyone, this is Brad Engel, and this is another segment of the Middle State Subcommittee re uh, uh, Report for QAC-TV uh, as we talk about the Middle State's accreditation for the Queen Anne's County Public School System. Now I'm here today, actually, um, and it's just me, I don't have a person that I'm interviewing, um, and I'm going to be talking about my specific area. Uh, I am the Supervisor of Student Services uh, for the Board of Education in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And uh, I was assigned to this job in July of 2011. So I've been in this job about six or seven months. And on my first day on the job, I became part of the Middle States Subcommittee. As a matter of fact, I was given a, a chair assignment uh, for guess what committee? Wait for it. Yes, student services. That was my committee. And I was happy to do it. I figured it would be a good way to learn a, bit, learn a little bit more about my job and understand that there are different standards of accreditation uh, for student services. Now, when we talk about student services for our accreditation process, uh, we're talking about the school counseling services. And actually, you may be more familiar with them as uh, what they used to call guidance counselors. But I'm here to tell you that in the state of Maryland, uh, we don't use the term guidance counselors officially anymore. We use the term school counselors. So uh, we're talking about the school counseling programs in all of our schools, all, including elementary, middle school, and high schools. The food services area, uh, which is supervised by John Gallagher, who was, who was invaluable uh, through this process and provided me all kinds of information, and uh, transportation and buses. Uh, and I worked with, with uh, Thad uh, Kalvinovich and Donna Clow, getting some information from them, and they're very helpful, providing me uh, different things. We, d we did a self-study or self-analysis about student services in those areas. Uh, and so Bonnie Dixon took the lead. She sent some uh, surveys out to parents and students, first of all, last spring. And the results were extremely favorable. I mean, we scored, in, as far as transportation and the satisfaction with the buses, we scored well over 90%. Same with food services. I mean, you're going to have, not everybody's going to like what you're serving at lunch, and not everybody is going to like the French fries or the, or the you know, the different kinds of uh, menus that people have. But for the most part, people were overwhelmingly satisfied with that. Same with transportation. Those are areas that, that, that uh, you know, not everybody was completely satisfied with, but for the most part, we got very high marks in transportation. Our bus drivers uh, got very high marks. And uh, as we went through the process, uh, 
you know, that, that was nice to hear. And then we took a look at the school counseling program. Again, uh, the results received from both the parents and the students were, were extremely high. Uh, and, and I really wasn't surprised about that. And as I have gotten to know the school counselors at all the schools, uh, we have a very great group of, of counselors. They're caring, they're dedicated, they're smart, they're hardworking. Uh, they, they, they love kids and they love to help kids. And, and that's what they do on a daily basis. And that was reflected in the survey data for, for both the students and the parents. Uh, and then the surveys went out to the staff, and that went out uh, August, uh, August, September, and the staff had an opportunity to reflect on student services. And again, the, the results were very favorable for the school counselors, and I think that school staff would probably have, have, have an excellent idea of how the school counselors work because they work with them every day, uh, gave them extremely high marks and were extremely complimentary of the work that they do. Um, so as we went through this process and, and we gathered the data, uh, we felt very confident about the, the area of student services and, and, and how we all approached our job. And I guess it's kind of, you know, being the name, name the head coach of a national championship uh, sports team. You know, you get a good group. And all you got to do is sort of keep the fine-tuned machine running. And that's what I try to do in student services as I work with these, these great, uh, great people. And it's really people that, that drive an organization. Um, and so we took this data and, and we did share it. We shared it with the leadership team and we, we shared it with the public at meetings, uh, at the local management board. Uh, we shared some information about student services out in the public. Um, you know, just letting people know and spreading the word about student services, not just about student services, but, but about the whole system in general. Um, so, so I feel if we look at our strengths, I think that our people, the people that the staff, the work in the schools, the school counselors, the bus drivers, the food service workers, uh, all the people that, that uh, are in charge here at central office and at the schools uh, are doing a tremendous job. I, I would say that is, a, that is a strength and that is our, our biggest strength. It is, you know, it comes down to what, the, what great people that we have. So with those people doing the great work, uh, we were able to accomplish a lot and get these results. Like I said, the results surpassed my expectations. I never, never thought that we would uh, receive such high marks in all areas. And it actually made my job easy, uh, a lot less paperwork as far as the uh, self-study goes because uh, I didn't have to talk about too many challenges because the way it looked, most of the challenges had been met. Um, and as and the process will end in well, I won't say it end, but it will continue into late February when the visiting team will come and look at the results, not just for uh, my committee, but the all twelve all twelve subcommittees, and look at the whole system. And will I feel confident that we will be granted accreditation? Uh, and I feel like as we move forward, this is this is going to be a great document, and it's really just the beginning for us as a school system. Uh, we are the first system in Maryland uh, to go through this process as a system and it's going to be a starting point for us as we continue to improve and get better uh, moving on down the road. Uh, so that's basically it in a nutshell. Uh, again, this is Brad Engel, uh, host of the Middle School Subcommittee Reports, giving, a, giving my own presentation on student services and so thank you for listening. All right, tell us who you are, please. I'm Julia Alley, and I work at Queen Anne's County High School as one of the assistant principals. Okay, your subcommittee was? Safety and health. Which means what? What were you looking for? We were looking at the policies and procedures that are in place to make sure that our schools are safe and healthy. You were in charge of committee. Who was on the committee? Well, in our committee, Rob Watkins, who is an assistant principal at Ken Island High School, John Gallagher, who is the head of Sodexo, which is our food services here at the school. Margaret Kaufman, who is our liaison with the health department, uh, school nurses. Matt Evans, who is our one of our PPWs in our school system, also dealing with uh, child welfare and things like that. Kristen Tyler, one of our teachers here at the school. She teaches dance. She's also instrumental in um, teaching some of the PE courses. Also, Sharon Rhodes, who is a parent and a nurse here at our school. And 
the last but not least is Chris Parkinson, who is our school resource officer. How did you gather information? How did we gather information? Um, we utilized uh, the email system within our county to contact all the people who are the heads of the various things, Tony Schultz for food, Thad Kalvinovich for um, the building and the safety in the buildings, and Sid Pinder for maintenance and those kinds of things. We also uh, emailed and talked to or called any of the school contacts to find out about individual schools, especially if they had outlying um, indicators on their surveys. Were these interviews or, or questionnaires or, I mean, and you had a, a, a bunch of set questions, right? We had set questions. We had documentation that we asked specifically for so that we knew that we were accounting for the safety of our buildings and for the standard procedures. Okay. Um, did the system and all the schools, because you're talking about all the schools here, meet the standards and the indicators? Yes, they did. They met or exceeded the standards or indicators. So we were very pleased to find that out. After ga gathering all this information, what were the system strengths? The si system strengths in this particular area are our partnerships with outside resources. We have a very strong partnership with uh, the health department, and the health department comes in and advises, advise, advises us on guidelines and COMAR and regulations that we need to have in place here to ensure the health and safety of our students. Also with the sheriff's department because they provide school resource officers for our high schools and our middle schools and they're a great resource in helping us deal with things um, such as bullying, harassment, um, potential infractions of crime, student safety both internally and externally in the school. This was a big important category, wasn't it? Yes, it seemed to be. <laughs> as a parent of a student in Queen Anne's County, I want to make sure our schools are safe as well. Um, what areas were noted for improvement? Um, mainly public relations on the certain areas that we have. Uh, for the one area is the water. Water mm -hmm. safety is, is tested mm -hmm. annually uh, and as far as things are going, they're great. We're doing fine. The problem is that in the past we did have an issue with some of our town water in Centerville and we took the steps and we provided bottled water and then we've tested and when that need was no longer seen as being necessary we stopped providing the bottled water in the school because our water supply was safe mm -hmm. however people do have long memories so they pr still perceive that that might be an issue so from a PR perspective we would do ourselves a great service by just being very upfront with that how safe our water is and and explaining to the community how we ensure that. People tend to remember the negative, but you can say that the water is, is, is fine to drink. Yes, the water is perfectly fine to drink. It, it meets all the, the guidelines and safety tests. Um, you've been here a long time in the system. What did you learn from the whole process? I learned how everything is connected, that we do not arbitrarily come up with standards and guidelines. We base most of our safety and health guidelines on what COMAR says. And so that, define that. Um, COMAR, those are the set of guidelines and regulations that are established by the state to make sure that we all come up to the same levels of expertise or safety within school systems. Statewide? Statewide. So we're doing pretty well? Yes, we are doing very, very well. How does your information get shared with the entire community as part of the MSA process? Okay. Part of the the information about the safety and standards is published on, in the school handbook, which is in our calendar for the year. It's available on the web from our school website. We also have crisis plans that are, if you contact the Board of Ed, they might share some of the information in that in order to let people know what our standards and safety guidelines are. And then during the MSA visit, um, people from the, it was it 12 people visiting, some will come here. Yes go through the building, look for records, make sure everything we've, you've stated, we have. Exactly. They will go and establish that when we say there is a binder where we keep all of the list of materials that we have in the school to make sure that nobody has any reactions to them or that they are um, safe by MOSHA standards, then they would see that it is where we've said it is. 
as a parent and an employee of the system, you're happy with the results? Yes, I'm very happy with the results. I, uh, that was one of the things I was surprised at, was just how very thorough everything is, how every everything that is in a school is thought of beforehand, how it might impact children positively and negatively. And if it negatively impacts, we do things to find better alternatives to those things. There's an advantage to this whole self-reflection process, isn't there? Yes, there is, because if you know ahead of time, or if you've thought about it and you go through this, then you can fix things before they even become a problem. So. You don't want surprises. Absolutely. There, and the only thing that was a surprise to me, again, was just looking at the thoroughness of what we have already established. Thank you. <laughs> That's it? That's it. Good.